everyone, my name is Mary Margaret. If you are new here and if you're returning to my channel, welcome back. Today I'm making good on a promise that I made last year, which was that I was going to make videos about books and art, which I haven't really been able to do before now, but I am on break from graduate school. So I thought, why not work on one of my painting projects that I'm doing for a different class that I'm taking and talk about some art books with you as I do that. So if you see here, this is part of my canvas that you can see. I've got some of my paint brushes here and my paint. And I have all of my oil paints in a separate bag because um, each one of these paints can get really, really messy. And so if I don't have them in their own bag, it makes a really big mess. So if you hear a lot of rustling plastic, that's what that is. But I'm gonna try to talk and work at the same time. And hopefully it's not uh, too chaotic, but we shall see how it goes. Maybe I can make this a regular installment. So what I'm gonna be talking about today is going to be some of the art books that I really would like to read in the near future. I'll try not to keep talking to this direction very much because I know that it's probably not picking up so well with the microphone. So I will just um, finish grabbing the paints that I need for this particular section that I'm working on. So you can see my lovely Star Wars pillow in the background. These are some bookshelves you probably have never seen before. It's pretty new to my room. But yes, this is an assignment I'm working on. It's 40 by 30 inches. This is a based on a collage that I made that I made kind of with the Phantom of the Opera and Moulin Rouge in mind. I think it's much more reminiscent of Moulin Rouge than Phantom of the Opera, but it's kind of supposed to look like a theater and I can show you what it looks like at the end of the video. The books I'm talking about today are books that I own that I've been wanting to read for a long time that are about different things to do with art. Today I thought I would just focus on Western art books and then next time I'm going to do non-Western art books. So I just kind of like to categorize things because I'm me, that's just what I like to do. So I hope that this is something that's interesting to you. So. The first book I wanted to talk about is this one here. It's called Off the Pedestal. This one is by, or edited by, Holly Pine Connor. I believe this is a collection of essays, if I remember correctly. So this is a book I actually read part of for research when I was writing my thesis for my master's degree a few years ago. And these are just some really fascinating essays. So I'll talk about what the book actually is about while I mix my paint for today. And basically, Off the Pedestal is a book about what is called, quote unquote, the new woman. Essentially, what this was is during the late 19th, early 20th century is that there were a lot of women who were that were fighting against these expectations that had been set for them that they really just were not happy with. And so this included quite a few different things. And Primarily, it had to do with the ways that women were restricted in society that they often still are today. And so in this book in particular, it's talking about, it says, the art of Homer, Chase, and then, of course, um, John Singer Sargent was the person that was most important to me at the time that I was reading this book because it was for research on a thesis about John Singer Sargent's work on Isabella Stewart Gardner's portraits. And so this is a book that I found a lot of really interesting things in when I was researching, but I never finished reading the whole thing because, you know, when you're researching a lot of times you kind of have to just read the part that is relevant because you just don't have time to really delve into it. And so that is something that I really want to get to in the near future because that is a topic I'm really passionate about, which is women and art, but it's also John Singer Sargent related, which I love. And then that time period is one of my favorites to read about. So that's one I'm hoping to get to soon. And by the way, if any of you have read any of these books or are interested in any of these things or these artists, please let me know because I would love to talk about this with you. Um, definitely something that would be of interest to me. So comment down below if that is you. Sorry, my focus is very much on mixing this paint. I always am really particular about the blacks that I mix and I want to make sure this is the right shade of black. So, all right, next book up. 
similar thing. Hopefully you're able to see. This is a different way of filming for me, so it's a little bit all over the place, as you can tell. Basically, this is a whole book about John Singer Sargent's murals in the Boston Public Library. So this is called Painting Religion in Public, and it is by Sally M. Promy, I think is how you say her name. It's spelled P-R-O-M-E-Y. It is a beautiful, beautiful book, like such a gorgeous book. Oh my goodness. I just found a bookmark in here. I forgot I had. This is a John Singer Sargent painting bookmark. This is so gorgeous. It's his carnation lily, Lily Rose. And this is at the Tate in England. I really want to see this in person, but I haven't yet. Um, that's so cool. I didn't even realize that was there. I'm going to put that to the side so I don't forget that's there. Uh, but these are such gorgeous works of art and I've actually been to the Boston Public Library so one of the main reasons that I became interested in the art of John Singer Sargent to begin with is because he actually was associated with someone named Isabella Stewart Gardner. I mentioned her before but basically Isabella Stewart Gardner was somebody who actually was a huge patron of the arts particularly in Boston but kind of traveled all over the world had some really fascinating things that she did and um, I learned about her when I visited Boston as a 12 year old, I think, and it just made a really lasting impression on me. And because of that, I knew I would like to research her some more. And I've always liked John Senior Sargent's art. And that's kind of why I am interested in it. And also, like I said, I've been to the Boston Public Library. I thought those murals were so beautiful. And they're also very different from any of John Singer Sargent's other work, which I think is really interesting because it's always fascinating when an artist has like an established style that they sort of depart from for just one project, which is essentially how I view his work in the Boston Public Library. I'm kind of all over the place right now because when I start talking about art, I kind of get a little bit scattered sometimes. So hopefully this makes sense to you guys. But what I'm working on right now with this painting, by the way, is this is my second and third coat of painting on different parts of this project. So for any of you who have worked with oil painting, you will know that you genuinely never know how many coats you have to do of paint to get the final product that you're looking for. And with oil paint, you have to let it all dry before you can put the next coat on so things don't get muddy. And I am on the second coat for some parts because of this and my third court, court, <laughs> my third coat for other parts. And right now what I'm working on is detail work because you kind of have to wait for the paint to be dry in order to go back in and get those details in. Because again, if you don't wait, it just gets really muddy and then it just doesn't look the way you want it to do. So that's what I'm working on right now. But <laughs> I've never propped the canvas up like this before while I'm working and it's very bouncy over here, so this is new. Um, so, very interesting way to be painting. And yeah, this is very interesting. I've got to get some paper towel, I've already got paint on me. <laughs> At this rate, I'm gonna have paint on everything that I own. So, but we shall see. All right, the next book, let's look up. So this is a book called Women Artists. As you can probably read, it's an illustrated history, the third edition. It doesn't actually say who the author is. Let me see. Okay, Nancy G. Heller. So it just kind of goes chronologically, as the title would indicate, through different periods of art history and talks about women artists. And I mean, as I said before, women in art are my thing. I just love to study that. I mean, I love studying pretty much everything to do with art, but I have particular favorites. And as you may know, you may not know, who knows, um, but for thousands of years, essentially, women have struggled in the art world to make names for themselves because they're often not take ser taken seriously, which is very sad. Thankfully, nowadays, it's not quite as true. I do think women are given a lot more room to be uh, creative and important than they used to be. It's still also the case in terms of like art history that a lot of women are still really 
not given the credit that they deserve and they're not part of the art curriculum which I think is just such a shame because all of these incredible artists are just being forgotten and so one of the things I love to do is to read about women artists so that I as an art teacher can tell my students about these wonderful women and how they contributed to art and made such an important difference and so books like this one that I just showed you are really important to me because that way I actually know about these people that I didn't learn about in school because we just don't talk about them enough and so I hope that'll be a good book. I will say sometimes books about artists like a lot of different artists they can be way too broad and more of a survey than anything and this is going to be a survey to a certain extent but I just hope it goes into more detail than I anticipate it will. Um, so we will see and again with all of these books I will definitely report back what I think about them and I'm hoping to have more time to read some of these over the summer since I decided to take this summer off grad school. I'm just going to be doing more art related things and preparing for the fall semester. So I'm hoping to kind of recharge and learn more about my subject, the things that I teach. So we are, you know, always hopeful about that, right? Or at least I am anyway. So that's my next book I would love to read. This one is absolutely humongous. It's called A World History of Photography. It's one of the most beautiful books that I own and I absolutely adore it. So this book is by Naomi Rosenblum. This is the fourth edition. Now you may see I have all of these tabs here and along the top and this is because I've actually read this already before. I took a history of photography course probably five years ago in the summer. I'm just trying to think how many years ago it's been. And it was and still is one of my favorite classes that I've ever taken in school. I absolutely adored it. And that was the textbook that we used because it is a textbook. But I think, you know, over the years I have seen and read various things about photography. And honestly, this textbook by Naomi Rosenblum is by far the best, like, overall survey uh, history of photography text that I have ever come across and I just thoroughly enjoyed reading it. It has these gorgeous gorgeous photos in it um, which is always important since it's a history of photography. Let me see if I can sort of flip through. It has all sorts of pictures. I'm trying really hard not to dip it into my fresh coat of paint here. Let's see. Um, So that sort of thing. Tons and tons of pictures. So it's not quite as long as it looks like it is because a lot of it is pictures. But I just found it to be so interesting. I absolutely loved reading it. And I thought it was so well written and very easy to engage with. And it talks about not only like the development of photography, how it's actually was how it actually was invented. Um, but it also talks about all of these photographers that I had just never heard of before and it just kind of opened my eyes to this whole new world of creative expression because as you may know photography is something that I have been interested in for a very very long time. I'm an amateur <laughs> photographer. I do really really enjoy taking pictures on a regular basis and I am very inspired by some of those original photographers. I think they are some of the most um, inspirational because they were the people who really were trailblazers, who were the pioneers of the medium, um, and just learning about what they did, how they kind of did what they did, is just really interesting to me and very inspirational. So that's something that I have read, but I'm hoping to reread it in the very near future because that's how much I love it. And so if you're looking for something that talks about that, I would absolutely highly recommend it and it's one of my favorite books that I've actually read before even though it's a textbook you know like that's kind of how hopefully gives you an idea of how good that it is so um yeah that's just uh something that was very you know interesting to me and that I would like to revisit just so that I can make sure I remember all of this really fun and interesting information. So, okay, let's move on to the next book. You can already see I'm getting tunnel vision. I 
when I start painting, I kind of get distracted and nothing else <laughs> can hold my attention very well. So, all right. So the next book is this. It's called Essential Monet. Yet again, I am not sure who the author is. Vanessa Potts. So this is a book one of my best friends gave me. Thank you, Hannah. Uh, and Monet is one of my favorite artists of all time. I adore his art. I think he was just a really cool person. And a lot of artists are really just not the nicest people, unfortunately. If you are an art historian, you'll know what I mean. And so I personally <laughs> am always very excited when I learn that an artist was actually a really nice individual. And that's really the case with Monet. I think he just seemed like an all-around sweet guy. And not only that, but his art is just so beautiful. I always enjoy looking at his works of art. In fact, I have one on my wall right over here. You can't see it, but it's there. Okay, things probably look a little different. I had to go and turn my camera back on because I've been talking so long that it shut off on me and was basically telling me I need to wrap this up. So I apologize that the angle and everything looks different, but hopefully everything is okay. I just heard the camera shutter just flipping out and then I <laughs> went and looked and it. Thankfully it had been recording. It just stopped me. But yes, Monet is just one of my favorite artists and that book is just so beautiful and I just think his art is so lovely. So I would love to learn more about him and also just about his art. I feel like there's always more to learn and in fact I actually got to see an exhibit of his work pretty recently, only like a couple of years ago. And it was just so fun because I feel like I learned so much about him, his personal life, but also about his art just from that exhibit. And it just kind of goes to show even when you know a lot about an artist and their art, there's still more to learn. So that's really why I would like to read that book. And yeah, that's just kind of my summary of that one. And I have just a couple other books that I wanted to mention. Okay, next book. This is this beautiful, beautiful book called The Letters of Cezanne. This is by Alex Donchev, I think. Donchev. I hope I'm saying that right. I usually look up the author's names beforehand, but I forgot to today. But this book is just gorgeous. This is just so lovely. It has the scans of the letters in addition to the actual letters. So Cezanne knew a lot of really important people during the time period he was active that I would love to read about his interactions with them. I mean, just opening this up, there's a conversation between him and Emile Zola as well as Monet. And I also just love Cezanne's art. I think he is another one of my favorite painters, if not up there with the absolute favorite painters. And so I think that would be a really awesome book to read and I think with letters and things like that usually the best way for me anyway to read it is to essentially just have a few pages read a day and then you kind of finish it within a year. That's usually how I do a book kind of like that and I just think it would be so interesting but I wouldn't be surprised if I get into the book and I can't put it down because just looking at it it looks super interesting. So we shall see. I will report back for sure. And you can see I'm getting more concentrated because this part is more intricate than the part I was working on before. So I'm getting a little bit distracted, but I'm almost finished so I can get more into the little details. This is the last book I'm gonna talk about. I can't remember if I've mentioned this book on my channel before. I don't think I have. If I have, you'll have to let me know. But this is Artemisia Gentileschi. It was published by Palazzo Real. Let me see. It's edited by Roberto Contini and Francesco Solinas. And this is just a beautiful, beautiful book about Artemisia Gentileschi and her art. And I just love any art book where they have these massive pictures of the works of art because of course, it's really difficult to actually go and see all of these in person, especially now. And this book, when I saw this at a used bookstore, I was like, I have to have it. It is so beautiful, which, you know, 
Based on the cover, you might not be too keen on it yourself. It is a very gross painting, but the life of Artemisia Gentileschi and all that she accomplished and everything is just so inspirational and her skill is just absolutely astonishing. I just love, oh no, there's another bookmark. I have all these bookmarks in my books that I don't even realize I have, but this is just absolutely gorgeous and I love that she has so many religious scenes in her works of art. Um, very characteristic of that time period, but as someone who is a Christian, I do love seeing beautiful paintings that tell stories from the Bible in a new way because a lot of these stories, and this is something that's talked about quite a lot with Artemisia Gentileschi, are painted with the women looking kind of not very realistic and not that interesting, and with Artemisia Gentileschi, she actually breathes life into these female, she actually breathes life into these women, and I absolutely love seeing that in her paintings, and not only that, but she was part of a group of painters who followed the style of Caravaggio, who is one of my favorite painters from the Baroque era, and so it has this really beautiful dramatic spotlight kind of appearance to every single one of her paintings and they're just all so dramatic and I absolutely love that about her work and I actually got to see an exhibit of her work in um well it wasn't specifically her work it was a Caravaggio exhibit but she had quite a few works of art in that exhibit and I was so thrilled because I had never gotten to see her work and it was just so amazing Things may have moved around again because my camera shut off on me again, which means I really do need to wrap things up. But right uh, before the lockdown happened and everything went sort of downhill in 2020, I actually got to see the painting here that is on the cover of Judith Slaying Holofernes. This is at least one of the several I think she did of this painting. She may have done just two, but this is probably her most well-known version, and I was so excited to see it, even though it's so gross, just because the story is just one of women empowerment, and I am here for that, and I just thought it was so amazing to see all of the details in person and up close. So that is one of my absolute favorites. So anyway, I'm going to wrap things up because this is getting very long, but I hope that this was interesting to you and that you were able to <laughs> understand what I was saying because I'm very distracted right now, but I just wanted to check back in and to make an art and book video. And now I'm going to show you the painting I'm working on. It is by no means finished, so please <laughs> know that. Hopefully this was interesting to you and something you found to be engaging in some way or another, but thank you so much for watching and now I'm going to show you the painting. All right, this is the painting. As I said, I am not finished with it yet, so please withhold any judgment you have. Uh, but it is definitely a fun one. I've been really enjoying working on it. And so currently what I'm doing is adding the black paint to really crisp up this area right here with the floral design as well as the area around the gloves over here and then here I'm going to be working on adding kind of more three-dimensionality to this curtain here and yes so I'm doing one of the things you're not supposed to do which is to paint while sitting on the floor but it works for me so <laughs> that's just what I decided to do but anyway thank you so much for watching I hope you all have a wonderful start to your week and I will talk to you soon bye